Hello, we are on live, and uh, today is July 15th, 2017, and we have a Saturday webinar with Karen Newman. Karen, turn on your web camera. Oh, hey, Karen. It is on. It is on. Oh, all right. Is it not on? Let me see. Uh, maybe, we'll see in a second. And you have with me <laughs> Angie, Angie. Kerry, Christine, Michelle, Salish, and Wendy. And we have two viewers outside. I still cannot see you. How about you try to turn it on and off? I cannot see you by some reason. Okay. Can you see it now? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> All right. I can go out and come back in if that's okay. I'll do um, that. Yeah, you can do it. It's just restart that window. F, F, press F5. It's the fastest way. F5? F, yeah, F5. Okay. I did. Hmm. I don't know what that did. No, I did. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I will do announcements meanwhile. So the main announcements, we have workshop coming in less than three weeks. And um, I guess everybody who knows, who watches our webinars already knows what wor the workshop is. So I'm announcing for the people who are joining just recently, the new ones. We are a human colony. Karen, you're good now. Okay. Good. We are a human colony community abbreviated as HUCOLA. And some people say HACOLA. And uh, it's an international community. And we are focused on channeling uh, and the bringing closer the open official contact with the aliens and the ascension. These are the main topics. Um, we meet at a um, Facebook group called Hukula Private, a Facebook group called Hukula Public. And um, our webinars, we have Saturday webinars every day at um, 11 p.m., 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you will find the announcements on the site humancolony.org. Click on jump. It is a jump page where we publish all the, all the links for the webinars. That's who we are. So the workshop is an Ascension workshop, and I do it for the first time. Uh, we'll, do teach, we'll teach classes uh, in real life, face-to-face, -face, in physically same location. It will be in a nice natural camp in cabins, uh, in the area of um, Buffalo, Rochester, upstate New York. And it's going to be in less than three weeks, starting August 3, and you'll find the registration information on uh, the site humancolony.org. Click on workshop. And the topics are going to be channeling classes, telepathy classes, uh, psychic classes, and uh, Reiki and galactic Reiki. The galactic Reiki is everything beyond the standard Reiki, uh, primarily what, what, is what, what is taught in the galaxy, what is practiced in the galaxy. Um, these are ways to work with your different um, etheric bodies and um, special symbols. And the main teacher will be a channeled um, Liron called Takura, or best friend and best contact in a uh, friend and best contact in the, in the out there. Um, Jim, Jim Charles and I will be teaching and we already have 25 reg people registered and we plan to have about seven more. That would be ideal for, for the size of the workshop. So there is still a chance to join and current, the current price is still $525 total of which are 200 down and the rest is due in, uh, when you arrive. And in five days, we raise that price. I think that's everything about the workshop. And the last announcement is that Karen started teaching the classes on remote viewing. And we already had the class. You can check it out um, at our YouTube channel. And uh, it was great. And um, the next class is scheduled coming Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern, oh, Karen, can you do 1 p.m. or 12.30? I, I shifted it just to make it clear, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. is fine, yeah. At 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. 
uh, for one hour and uh, it's for club members only you can easily join the club for ten dollars a month and and join that um, class uh, to join the the club you go to humancolony.org and click on club and then uh, there you subscribe through paypal these are all announcements and um Karen, do you have any announcements or do you want to go channel what's your preference <laughs> Um, I, I just I do have something coming up on the 12th of August uh, in the Netherlands if you're anywhere near uh, Amsterdam or um, Germany or you know Belgium anywhere that's close to Amsterdam uh, Sean Swanson and Vita Kulhoff and I will be doing intergalactic conversations uh, it's a day of, of channeling um, all of our ET families and our uh, our intergalactic guides so it'll be it's going to be really good and if you go to my website about oneness.com you can purchase a ticket the tickets are 45 uh, euros now and they're 55 at the door so it's going to be a full day of channeling with three international channelers so i think it'll be really great and i hope you can make it so about oneness.com is the name of the website wonderful thank you thank you and yes, for channeling, I guess I'll just, um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to tone and then I'm going to channel and I will uh, uh, let Theos come through and then they will answer any questions that you have. So that's, <laughs> that's just going to do, that's going to happen. Are you going to be doing questions, Max? Are you going to be? Uh... Yes, yes. Um, I will do next 45 minutes and then I will let uh, my friend to take over. Perfect. Who's your friend that's taking over? Uh, it's still. Uh, I, I will discuss it in 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 the chat box, and then uh, okay. it will be a surprise for you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. All right. Okay, just give me one moment. I just have to get adjusted in my seat here. Okay. All right. I take my shoes off so my feet can touch the ground. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. See you in a little bit. Oh Namaste. Namaste. We are here. We're very pleased to be here. Thank you. So we would like to uh, talk just a little bit about um, joy and bliss and how to get it, how to walk in it and how to experience it. We sit in the bliss, basically, all the time. And there's a moment when we are coming through 
Karen, and she now is experiencing that bliss. And it's really done through the meditation that she enters into, but it's really accessible for everyone. And we would really encourage you to start to meditate and to OM. OM is the sound of creation. It is the connection to all that is. And if you do not OM, you're missing something. So we would just encourage you to find a tone that feels good within your throat, within your body, and ohm it out as long as you can. Just hold that sound. There's four sounds to the ohm. The ohm is the ah ohm. But then there's the silence. And the perfect silence is where we are in that perfect bliss, that pre-creation moment. The OM is the sound of creation, but that silence is the primordial potential of everything. And you should experience it because once you experience it, you will truly understand joy and you will truly understand bliss and you will begin to seek it for yourself, which is the only one that you can really seek it for. You won't find it outside of yourself. You only find it inside, and it only comes from inside. So we feel very strongly because we think some people don't know how to find that peace and find that joy. And we would say to you, it comes from the quiet meditation. And we would like you if you would with us to own three times that's the perfect amount so that we can just set the mood for this webinar and for this channeling we can bring you into our frequency we yeah everyone share the energy now. together so you can mute your mics or so that we're not all owning at different times because of the delay in the in the transmission but we would encourage you and if you're watching this on a playback do it anyway the energy transference is always in the now there's only now so whenever you do it you'll be right there with us and we will be with you so if you would just close your eyes and take a deep breath in, a cleansing breath, and feel the breath going down into your solar plexus. And hold that breath there for just one moment. And as you exhale, you'll own. And we'll do it three times all together. So here we go. Breathe in through the nose, holding the breath and exhaling slowly. Oh. Oh. sit here in this perfect spot of quietness and peace and love. This is your perfect state of being right now, right here. And it's always accessible to you. With that, 
Are there any questions? Yeah, I wanted to compare. Is it Theos, right? Yes, Theos. Hey. We are Theos. We are a collective, and that is our how we are called. And I think uh, that's the first time I, I talked to you. Yes. So my comment was, uh, can you compare um, that state of bliss that you mentioned and the state of love to another person? What's the difference? Well, love in, in the purest sense, there is no difference ever. But love is actually a state of being as well as being an emotion. So. Sometimes when you are in love with another person, it's a feeling that you have. But love as a state of being is, is that bliss, that, that is your true self. You can love someone unconditionally, which is a state of being, or you can love someone conditionally, and that's more emotionally tied. Love, true love has no condition. It is, as opposed to, I love you, but, or I love you temporarily, or I, I love this piece of pizza because it tastes so very good, or the banana split that one of our people is so obsessed with lately. But true love is who you are. You can love things, and it can be thrown around, but in the largest sense, everything is love. So we don't want to confuse you too much because everything is love. Everything is a manifestation of that love. So the emotion is what's different. The condition is what's different between the two. Do we answer your question? Oh, that's a huge one. Yes, thank you. Um. Yes. Do you have yes, the question love is, for another person that you're questioning whether it's real love or if it's emotion? Oh, of course I have a love. Yes, no question. No, the question was more theoretical. Why cannot we... Yeah, why we are so incomplete? Why we are always separate? Because we do not understand that we are one. We see separation when we see each other. And when you realize that there is no separation, there is only love for each other. Because we are, you are only, we are all one. We are, everything is one. There is this, which is not really this small, but it could be. There is this that is everything. And there is nothing outside of everything. If you believe that all that is, is all that is, then there's nothing else. So we are part of all that is. There's not all that is and then that thing over there. We are one. We are connected through the reflection that we are only reflecting our creator, our divine creator, whatever you want to call that, whatever you want to say. But there is only us and there is only one and we are part of that one. And if you knew that, if you truly knew that, then you would have nothing but love for everything because it's you so that is the difference when we see anything as separate than ourselves then then we have the false idea that it in some way is different or not connected and that is the most untrue thing in this in this existence that people think True enlightenment is the realization of oneness. And the, it's not just knowing it, but knowing it. Not thinking, oh, it's true, but I don't want to subscribe to it. When you know it, when it is the only thing that you can think about anything that you see, that that is me, that is me, that is me, then there's only love for that. Uh -huh. So the separation is just an illusion, another illusion. Separation is an illusion, yes. Next question, thank you. Next question is Carolina, then Michelle, then Wendy. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, well, first, uh, I would like to um, thank you for the wonderful healing you gave me the other day. I feel, mm. I feel great. Good. <laughs> 
my question is um i was i was talking to somebody yesterday and the person was telling me that he can't he doesn't feel that he's advancing in in any way he can like he's trying to meditate he's trying to he's trying every trick of the book to or spiritual and I did not know what to tell him I was wondering if he had some advice for him yes we will say that the trick in the book there's a saying that says if you meditate 20 minutes and you don't feel anything then meditate for one hour but maybe that's not really the answer he wants to feel spiritual or to advance spiritually the one thing he has to realize is that he is spiritual he's not uh, he's not a human being, you know, and that is non-spiritual. Spirituality is what you are, and you're human. Spirituality is what you are, and you're a chair. Spirituality is what you are, and you're the train that is going by on the tracks. Everything is spiritual. You can't get away from it. Again, that's the idea of seeing something as separate or seeing something as not part of you. That is who you are. You are a spiritual being in a human body. So you don't have to work very hard to be spiritual. If he's looking for the sort of, I feel like I'm growing, well, the fact that he's even seeking or trying is, is more than then he really needs to try to do it. And we, we, wanna, we want him to be gentle with himself about it because there is no one standing there to give you a diploma that you've reached level five of spirituality. Right, he, he is really looking for a connection. And well, the connection he'll get yeah. when he sits down and he, let him own, let him own yeah. and let him find that connection. But we will say to him, anything that inspires awe, in him is the connection if he looks at a flower and feels awe if he looks at his child if he has a child and he feels awe if he looks at a beautiful sunset and he feels awe that is the connection because true spirituality in acknowledging the divinity of something else and also ultimately yourself is what is, is what is true spirituality, is seeing something and realizing that that is divine. So if you look at the sun and you, you see it set and you see the most beautiful sunset and it takes you to a place where you say that is awe-inspiring, that's the connection. Now to find that connection with other things, but stare at the sunset, stare at the... Sun, uh, sun rising. Do you know what we mean? So whatever makes him say, wow, that's the connection. And that's the beginning of the connection. And if he realizes that he's part of all of that, so that's the connection that you want. Uh, thank there's you There's nothing so more much. than that. Yeah, there's nothing more than that. We would yeah. like to give you a better answer, but it's really that simple. And, and, and when you start to try to find your spiritual connection, people run all around and, and they think that it's here and that it's there, but it's always inside of us. It's always inside of us. And the awe is what he needs to find, that connection, where he marvels oh. at something. He marvels. That, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much love to you. Hi, Karen. It's Michelle. Hello, Michelle. It's Karen and Theos. Thank that you. That is correct. Um, mm -hmm. Theos, I was actually wondering if you could, if you would be willing to dip into my spiritual atmosphere. <laughs> um, I, um, your spiritual atmosphere is our spiritual atmosphere. We want you to know. It's everyone else's spiritual atmosphere as well, but we will we will play along with you. Uh, kind of 
similar to the previous question, you know, we have these times in our lives and we feel really connected as the overriding um, emotion slash feeling slash knowing um, getting small, which I feel like I somehow an old um, old ideas and have kind of made myself small again. So knowing what it feels like to feel like standing in your power and knowing the truth of who you are versus where I am right now is a start really uncomfortable for me. I really like to um, practices and I practice the general practices but um, I don't I, I don't know I thought I, heard that I saw I saw somebody did a beautiful um, illustration of this of your collective um, and someone Carolina had had a beautiful healing and I was like when I saw them and I heard that, I was like, I was, us, when you saw I, us, that is correct. I was hmm. like, I really want some of whatever that is. Well, we will, we'll answer your question and we will talk to you for a moment because we think that's what is really ultimately what needs to happen. And, um, we'll just tell you, there are moments in your existence yours and everyone's where life is not going in a way that feels good and and much of that has just to do with resistance to letting things be and not wanting to control them or feeling out of control of them and having a lot of things happen that are very hard to rationalize in a very short amount of time um, but that's why we're sort of here to to become masters of that and to just trust that all is well and that we are experiencing and we choose in every moment and, 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 and we hear you saying, I know this, so we will say it anyway because we're talking to you but to others as well. That in choosing in every moment how you react and life will bring you these opportunities to react over and over again until you stop reacting. So um, we love you, first of all, and you know that, but we, we do really love you. And we will also tell you that when, when you are in a situation where all doors feel closed and all encounters feel stale, and when you're doing the same thing that you normally do, but you're not getting the same result, this is your chance to shake it up a little bit because you are being shaken. So now is the time to change something. And changing is the resistance. You saying, I'm doing everything I know to do. I've, I've been doing all this stuff I know. Um, then maybe don't do that anymore. Do something else. Change something. When doors start closing and when people and interactions become stale, sometimes it's time to let them go or move away from them. And out of habit, out of familiarity, out of sense of duty, preconceived ideas of what is right, what is wrong, what we're supposed to do, we hold on much longer than we should a lot of times. And that's just sometimes the way we do it, but you learn maybe to let go a little sooner the next time. But sometimes it's about letting go, letting go of expectation and letting go of things that just simply aren't working people that aren't working, situations that aren't working. Karen uh, had a situation several months ago where she 
said something to people and, and they got a little bit nervous, but she was being very honest about how she was feeling. And she said, I feel empty. I am completely empty. I've never felt so empty. Now, if you look that up online, that can be quite scary in a psychological way, but she didn't have any ill intent, but she felt more empty than she'd ever felt in her life. And it was only because everything that she had been doing for a long period of time had come to its conclusion. And that's what happens in life. You go through cycles of situations and then they conclude. And if you don't know what you're doing next, then you have a little bit of a, a moment of what's coming, where am I supposed to go? So while everything in the is shutting down, while the things are concluding, you are looking for your same feeling to come from the things that are now becoming less and less and less. And so she went to some psychics that she knew and she said, what's happening for me? What's happening? And, and one of her very good friends told her, she said, you know, Karen, um, it's your choice what you do. So don't wait for something to come, but you choose it for yourself. And that's the lesson. And so that was the lesson that she didn't need to wait for something new to happen in her life, but she had to choose what she really wanted. Now she gives other people the exact same advice. So and we give her that advice as well, but she has to know it because it has to be real for her. You know, everyone's a very good quarterback on Saturday or whenever that is. We don't know. We don't play football, but everyone's a good backseat driver. But until you are in that situation where it becomes real for you, where you have to look at what you're living and say, is this working for me? And it can be the smallest thing or it can be the biggest thing. Usually it's cumulative and it's a lot of little things. But we would encourage you to take this opportunity to take inventory of your life and to decide is this thing that I'm doing right now working for me? Is this relationship that I'm experiencing, that I am choosing to be in, working for me? Is this financial situation working for me? And then make changes and take action to change them. And choose whatever it is that you think will bring you joy. Nothing else, because when you just replace it with something that's good enough or I'll get by until the next or this will be this will work, then you'll be exactly in the situation again and probably much faster than you were. A temporary fix is only a temporary fix. So in this 5D world that we are, things manifest much quicker, not as quickly as we would like sometimes because we still have that filter and we're still bridging those those worlds but this is how things will be choose what brings you joy choose what brings you bliss because the rest of it will just not be worth it and it's hard on people who are awake because they know the difference they know what it's like to be in complete joy and they know what it's like to be in hell so your part is to say, okay, I'm here. Acknowledge that you're there, what you've done. So you say, this is a hard place for me. And, and we see that. And so, but take inventory, write some things down and look at them. Is this working? And make the hard choices. You will feel weight coming off of you when you make those choices. And make them because it's right for you. Make them because it's a good choice for you. And when you do that, you will be free. And that's true for everyone. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We love you. Love you. Um, Wendy, question next? Hi, Karen. Hello. I mean, I'm sorry that I didn't get the name right. 
Well, my name is Karen, and then we are Theos. So we are both speaking now. What's happening? We will tell you it, and we will tell you this as Karen is becoming an integrated channel. So there's going to be very little. She is in a state of, of meditation, but but she's here. So um, it's not like she's uh, left the building or anything. We're we're quite we're quite uh, much. Uh, quite in, in, in intertwined and so so you yes. can speak to either one of us it doesn't Theo. matter theos with yes. an s yes yeah mm. okay um i wanted to find out how to use an overwhelming amount of love that is not lustful but it's active in terms of knowing um sensory is there it's an emotional form that I want to redevelop to use in a creative way to manifest. Well, we would suggest you study Kundalini or sex magic, basically. Um, love without expectation is real love. You give love because that's who you are. You're talking more about a kundalini type of energy, a projection of will, and that's a little bit different. You are love, so you you are that as your pure state of being. To project your will is different. You're a creative being, so you would use that creativity to stimulate the the inspiration for whatever it is you want to create. The kundalini energy directed would be how we would we would propose you do that. So that's a big topic and it would take a long time to 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 go through, but we would say you need to study kundalini and, and, and using your kundalini energy to direct your will. What is it that you want to create? And, and there's nothing wrong with sexual energy, first of all. Uh, creation is sexual. All creation is sexual. It is the sexual energy. It is the masculine and the feminine coming together, coming together that creates. So we made special emphasis on the word coming for, for just that reason. Sexual energy is creation. It is the creative force that is the bliss, that is the oneness. There's no difference. The height of orgasm is the bliss of creation. So kundalini energy will help you find that bliss. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Okay. okay. But there's nothing, we, we want to say, and because you made a point to say non-sexual and we would say to you, sexual energy is the creative force. And there's nothing dirty about that. In the Western mind, it's dirty. Yeah. But that is, the Western mind tends to think about it being dirty, but the Western mind has been made falsely modest. And it would be a lot better if people were more free in their sexuality and their sexual creativity. So. Awesome. But look so into Kundalini. Mm. Kundalini. Um, any particular author or any particular authors who work? Well, we would we would we would look at you doing Kundalini yoga because it's oh, yeah. about controlling. It's about controlling the energy. You know, if you're doing the yogic practices and you're able to control the the flow of your Kundalini, then you will learn to use it within the rest of your life. What is it that you're trying to create? Um, I want to re re I want to recreate a new way of functioning in, in my life. Like, you know, either do more spiritual work to use it into a healing, but more so using the modalities of my hand and my mind and that energy that way, mm -hmm. um, recreating it. Well, we would say start with Kundalini meditation, Kundalini yoga, and learn to learn to feel the kundalini moving through you. Do you feel it? 
Do you feel it or no? No, no, I do feel it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I so have you it. sat down and done meditation to learn to actually control it and express it? Um, I've, I've used the OM meditation to do it, and it will bring it back into an alignment of balance within me when it happens. And then um, at certain parts of the day, it looks like it peaks and it goes up and it comes down, that kind of way. It's like a wave, up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, it does follow your cycles. And, but, but to use your kundalini, I mean, your kundalini is always part of you. So we would just say it would be best to do some kind of kundalini work, do some kundalini yoga, and really learn what it is that you're working with and how to express it. But, you know... That energy, if you're doing like a Reiki or an energy healing or something like that, that energy will come through you when it's called, when it's necessary to be called. You don't have to really recreate anything. The only thing you have to do is become a good channel for it. And you are not doing anything if you're doing healing. We hope you know that. You are only just like a telephone, like like Karen right now is just a telephone and she's not in any way attached to what is being said because that is not the function of a channel. A channel is only a a, a filter of energy, a filter of information, but it's the same with healing. So when you're healing, you, what you're saying is I allow myself to be free and untethered or un, that's not the word, un, we don't have the word. I allow myself to be the perfect vehicle or the perfect conduit, that's the word we're looking for, for this energy. But you yourself aren't putting the energy out there. The energy is coming in from the universe and it will go to where it needs to be to go. We would say to you, have you studied Reiki or anything like that? Yes, I have. Okay, well, you know that. That's what they tell you in Reiki, that the energy is coming from outside and that you are just the channel. So I would say to you, instead of trying to recreate it, unless you find some uh, modality that is specifically you, but if you're doing it, it will be specifically you. But allow uh, to allow the energy to come through you in a very pure way and, and don't try to um, recreate it. Try to be a good conduit. That's really your your goal, is to be the best conduit you can have, to be the most open that you can have. And then you're doing it with love. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Yes? Does it make sense? So your, so your work now is to control your kundalini so that at will, when you go to do healing, you know what it feels like to move that energy. And you're in control of doing it. That's your work yeah. because it's already there. You're not going to recreate Kundalini. We came equipped with it. So. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. You explained thank it you. very, very well for me to get a, a better understanding. Thank, you, so thank you. But thank you for wanting to be of service to people because that's really the important thing. And, and if you want to experience love, Kundalini also means action. So service in action has to be coupled with love and then 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 you're offering the most pure thing wisdom and love everything with love is always the most effective so thank you for being of service and uh, you know you'll be fine namaste thank you theos uh christina is next with her question yes theos um i had talked to um an acquaintance or a friend who does ch- uh, who um, can I had asked him what my grandmother and grandfathers were up to or they had already passed and one of them my Portuguese grandmother she um, from what I understand um, is reborn in um, one of the uh, Arab lands where women aren't um, allowed to um, learn or go outside their house and um i had asked him um if i could help her by sending her prayers or this or that and the first time that he channeled her um she said leave her alone so the second time 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the second time I um, asked her or asked him again if there's something I could do or what was she doing, she made the comment that this particular life that she chose is really harder than what she expected. And so my thought is, um, by me sending her love in this particular um, incarnation that she has, am I interfering with her or, you know, it's like I'd like to, I'd like to help, like, send her, am I interfering? <laughs> no, love is never interfering. Send love. Send love to the whole world. Send love to your grandmother. Send love to everyone. Send love without expectation. That's okay. the difference, eh? So, okay. you know, um, love without expectation is true, unconditional love. So, okay. But, I just, but never hesitate to send love. Okay. I doubt I, anyone is going to deflect it. <laughs> <laughs> when she was in um, this life as my grandmother, um, she was an immigrant from um, the Azor Islands, which was a very difficult life. So it's kind of interesting that she chose even a more difficult life in her incarnation. And it's, I just want to be very grateful that she, you know, it's really hard. <laughs> I feel guilty that I feel my life is very easy. And then here she keeps picking these difficult lives to incarnate in, and I feel really Wow. I, I, anyway, I'll send her love. <laughs> well, we wouldn't feel guilty for a life you chose and knowing that everyone chooses their, their, uh, their lives. It's different if she was outside of your door and asking for your help and you were telling her, no, go away. So then maybe you should feel guilty. But if you are only sending love to someone and you know that we choose our existence then there's no reason to feel guilty it's a little bit odd that you would choose to feel guilty because that's your choice and there's no reason for it celebrate your life celebrate the freedoms that you have celebrate the things that are going well and then you're honoring life and you're honoring the choice and, and perhaps she has a reason for her choice, for what she's, what she's doing. So, but we wouldn't feel guilty over something that is nothing you can do anything about other than send love. Her um, intention is to, um, as, because she's a girl, is to bring um, education to girls. So do you want to... Uh, rob her of that joy then no i wish to send her packages of books <laughs> well if you can find a way to do that then we would encourage you to do that yeah it's just the love okay send the love and don't feel guilty don't choose to feel guilty anybody ever we, we find that a very odd choice. Well, I wouldn't want to do that. I don't think I have the courage. And then there's an aspect of the larger part of you and the larger part of the oneness that does. So let that being have their experience and you make the best of yours and don't feel guilty. Okay. Thank you, Theos. Okay. Hello. Thank you, Theos. Uh, Angie is next. Hi, Angie. Hi, Theos. <laughs> um, uh, I can feel your love. It is beautiful. And yes. I always do when you come through. Um, you, sorry, let me just compose myself. I'm overwhelmed. Mm. You're talking about the Kundalini. I'm going to take you back there, if you don't mind. I have, I don't, it's active in my body, this Kundalini. There's so much heat. Um, I feel like I'm wearing a nappy most of the time. And it's going right up my head. And 
I've tried to sort of look into it and see what it's about, what it's for, what can I use it for, because it doesn't seem to be... What I feel it's doing is making a, more my crystalline body. But I would like you to help me and uh, to understand what, what is it for. Does it rise up when it is needed to give that energy away? Uh, and in rest when you don't need to give it away. Um, you know what I mean? What can we use it for mainly? Kundalini is not... Uh, um, Kundalini is your life force. It is part of you. Um, sometimes you feel bigger than life. Your Kundalini will be very high. Sometimes you feel small. Your Kundalini mm -hmm. will be low. It is your life force. So if your kundalini is, you say, coming up and, and you know, coming up into your head, it, that means that your life force is, is asserting itself. Um, we would say to you, again, with the same uh, recommendation is that you sit down and you learn to do kundalini yoga to control this energy. You know, it's the same as when a person is hyper and out of control mm -hmm. and, and can't control their, their selves. So you need to understand it to control it. You will be inspired to give healing to people that you need to give healing to. But if it's surging in and out of control, then we would just say to you, to learn to control it. There's nothing, uh, yeah, there's nothing more to say than that. But take the time to learn to do it. Things sometimes require effort and require practice. And, be, you know, we would also say this is an opportunity to get into control of your life force, to raise your life force, to expand your life force. Mm -hmm. Your life force might be trying to expand and just needs a little bit of, of your self-knowledge to help it do so but we wouldn't uh we wouldn't give you any other advice other than to learn to control it that's your opportunity to do it and you do yourself a disservice by not learn yourselves learn what's happening with you um, because it, you your vehicle your your mind, your soul, your body, your, all these things, your heart, are all tools for you. They're mm -hmm. tools to be used and to be mastered. And you only get them by practice, by taking the time to explore. You'll find out when you start really looking at your life force and your kundalini energy and moving it, and you start to learn to move it at will up and down your body, that you can do a lot of things that you never would have done. But unless you learn to do it yourself, only talking about it is only talking about it. So this is the time where you take the action and you put in the effort. And then you won't be asking the question because you'll know. You'll know what to do, how to do it. Well, well, since it's been active, I've certainly had an inner guidance mm -hmm. of my own. I don't know if it's because of that, too, but... Well, we uh, all have inner I, guidance. That's part of yeah. me. Yeah, this is true. But I'm, I'm, I am trying to find out what it is all about, and I am learning. And I'm, it, do, I do a lot of meditation. Uh, Spiritual work. Maybe I'm a little bit out of balance because I do too much spiritual work and not enough 3D work. I don't know. Um, yeah, well, we would say to you, learn to control your kundalini, and 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 really go to a teacher that knows. Do you know every being usually there is a teacher involved, and 
this will be your opportunity to learn from someone who really can explain it to you and, and, and is also in control of their kundalini. And then you will take that knowledge and pass it on to others. So mm -hmm. first master yourself and then I, you can pass it on. I um, noticed every time I come into a room with where you are, you always answer my question before I ask it. So it's like um, the answer came further on down the line before I even asked it. Uh, so, Good. What yeah. was your I'll question be, then? Well, my question really was, I wanted to know more if, if you have more insight into what I'm actually doing with my Kundalini. Because well, from what we understand, you're not doing anything. You're just experiencing it and you're not sure. So we would say to circulating you. Circulating it. Okay. Um, circulating it and um, uh, creating this crystalline body with it. Now, I wanted to sort of confirm that. You know, with a well, we are becoming more crystalline as a species. Yeah. It is a slow process. Maybe you'll get mm -hmm. there first, but... It's, 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 it's a slow process. And, you know, the crystalline body will not be in this 3D world. It yeah. will be in the 5D world. And it may not be in our incarnation now. So okay. we, will, we will see. The, 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 excuse us, the crystalline body is more in the astral than it is in the physical at the moment. If we were to cut you open, we wouldn't see a crystalline body in that that's being created on the astral. Okay, I see. Yes. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. You're welcome. I love you. I love you too. That was Karen. Is there any other question? Okay, uh, there is a question uh, on outside chat which says, how do you do Kundalini meditation? I am new to this. It's from Lilipad. Well, Kundalini meditation has a lot to do with uh, specific breathing, uh, specific asanas, which are positions, but you will be doing breathing in through the nose and it requires quite some practice and we don't really have the time to uh, demonstrate it here, nor is Karen in a position where she can actually do it at the moment. So. But it is. It requires specific breathing. Kundalini is a practice that is also a mindset. It has to do with diet, lifestyle, bathing, rest, meditation. So there's many things that go along. But the meditation itself is, is sitting in a certain position and doing a breathing, breathing in through one nostril and, and holding that breath and then taking it out. And it can be fast breathing through your diaphragm. So we could do Thank maybe a, a, a time on Kundalini meditation, but it's not uh, is the same as regular meditation. It ha it's a very specific practice with specific exercises that go along with it. And it requires a good teacher to teach you how to do it correctly. But we think you could probably Google it as well. But it's not something you do one time. It's something you do over a period of time it's called a practice for, for that reason it's something that goes on for quite some time for a lifetime actually thank you i um recently had a, a realization of um and i'll just share it with you maybe you can comment so i do self reiki self-healing and i was trying to describe the feeling of uh intense self-healing process when i pl place my hands somewhere on my belly and i feel a very specific buzz and heat and vibration and uh, tension and numbness on there during my meditation and i usually shift away and then when i come back that that uh, sensation is still there so i try to describe it and finally describe it as a local orgasm of uh, of that organ it feels very similar. It's like liver orgasm or heart orgasm or something like that. Uh, am I correct? Is it the same mechanism or is it, um, can you explain it, the, the, the essence of what, what is happening during the healing? 
What is happening during the healing is that energy is coming in and it is moving to specifically the place where it's needed. And what you find is that the that the energy as it comes in, say here, as you say, or here, there's residual energy working even after you take your hands away. Because so you have the actual energy coming in and then what you are feeling, what you're feeling when you take your hands away is the regeneration of cells, the reconfiguration and the bringing back into balance. So there is a joyful feeling in that coming back into balance because that's the alignment that your body should be in. So it's almost as if when you, you know, take your, this is not a good example, but if you take your hand off the stove, it feels so good when you take your hand away and then you feel your, your hands start to, uh, that's definitely not a good example, but what we're saying is that it's the residual energy doing its work. Because even though you take the energy, your hands away, the energy is still there and it will stay there and do what it needs to do for as long as a time as it needs to do it. So what you're feeling is the realignment and that's a joyful place. We don't know that it would be a, a bad word to use organic or, or orgasmic. We don't know that that's uh, the correct word, but we wouldn't say it's an incorrect word either. We would say that you're bringing back everything into balance. And that's a, that's a joyful expression of, of rightness, of alignment, of perfection coming through that energy. So it's a relief to, to, the, to the body, to the physical body. It's giving ease, and therefore, you're feeling it in a pleasurable way because it's a pleasurable thing that's happening. So, I hope that answers your question. Oh, thank you. Yes. Are there any more questions in the audience? Amanda, Carolina, Kerry, Christine, David, Pete, uh, Selesh, Stephanie, Wendy. This is Stephanie. I have a question. Thank you. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming, as Thank always. Thank you for having us. <laughs> um, going back to the the, the um, Kundalini, well, I don't know if it's really Kundalini. Kundalini. R right, but there was um, a question I think Wendy had um, raised, and you had talked briefly about the sexual energy, and mm. it reminded it reminded me of something I'd read with regards to the Egyptian Ankh symbol that there was uh, a usage, I believe, by um, by them to Ankh energy, that same energy of orgasm back into the system. Is I, I may not be describing that right, but that the Ankh was used relative to that energy that occurs and allows it to be useful in a different way, either energetically or energetically in the body. Can you speak to that? No, we can't speak to that specifically, but what we can say is that within the practice of Kundalini, when you're having tantric sex, for instance, it's the delay of the orgasm that is used. Now, whether the Ankh is a tool in that where we don't know, that is not something we, we know. Um, but we will say to you that the delay in the expression of the pleasure raises that energy even more. And, and that there's entire practices that are dedicated to the delaying and the, the utilizing and the harnessing of that energy. So that energy is generated and it grows and grows and grows and gets to a crescendo before it's released. And the idea of, of Tantra is to keep that intensity without the release. Now we have uh, images in our, in our, you know, in Karen's head of, of the Ankh sort of pulling out that energy, though we don't, we don't know that that is actually how it was used. We don't actually think so. Um, but the idea of building energy, holding it, 
and then using it for something else other than the release is basically what Tantra is. And that's how Kundalini is used in Tantric sex. And it can be used to creation. The, for creation, the creation force is the, is the orgasmic moment. So everything going up to then is, 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 is the building. And that's what you want in creation. You want to delay that as much as possible. Do you understand? Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, and a, a follow-up question relative to Kundalini, and, and I know this uh, isn't going to be for, for everyone, but how, is it just a knowing if your Kundalini has been igniting, ignited, or is there always something physical that, I've heard a lot of well, descriptions about Kundalini <laughs> is truly life force. In other disciplines, they call it chi. You know, we have it or we wouldn't be alive. We have life force or we wouldn't be alive. Only dead objects have no life force. That's why they're dead. So you have it. The idea is to be able to harness it and utilize it. And if you see, uh, uh, you see monks that are adept at using their kundalini to you know, hit a, uh, a stack of wood and it breaks, or you're using that kundalini energy, that chi energy to set a fire to paper or to use that to heal. That's directing that life force energy. But we all have it. So, but you will feel it. You can feel it when you, you feel suddenly invigorated when a when a woman pulls the car off of her child her kundalini becomes very strong and, and she's using that force that's that you know there, there's there's a, a wealth of power within the physical body that is not utilized because people don't know how to to harness it so you feel it at certain times when you feel very motivated and there's nothing that's going to stop you and you're going to go and get it and you work yourself up into this sort of, you know, controlled frenzy where, you, where you're going to go, 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 go for it. That is your kundalini high. When you're laying on your couch and you can't figure out how you're even going to pick up your hand to turn the remote on, that's low kundalini energy when you're so exhausted. So... The difference oh, is harnessing it, right? Okay. That's yeah. very helpful. Very good. Thank you. There's people that can move mountains. Maybe not literally, but we would not We would never want to put any limitation on anything. So it's harnessing it, and it, and it, it is, it's done through first finding it, feeling it. You know, it's there. You, 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 you don't get more kundalini. It's everyone comes equipped with it. It's, it's part of our... It's part of our starter package of this human body. It comes with it in your in your body. So, but utilizing that and and learning how to raise it. You know, you can during sex. I mean, sex is the best example of kundalini because most people have had some sort of sexual experience where they feel themselves this energy building and building and building, and that's kundalini energy. It's not always uh, it's not always uh, it, coming through a sexual feeling. You don't have to be in, in throes of passion to control it, but you can raise that energy. And it is truly an energy. It's not a, it's not a, 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 a non-energetic uh, thing. It doesn't feel like nothing. It, it feels like something. It feels like, you know, pulsing energy coming through you. And when you can learn to direct it through your hands or through your mind or through through whatever it is you're doing, through your determination, through your intention, it's, it's a very powerful force. So Google on the internet and watch, you know, some of these masters that can go like this and send someone flying across the room. These people have strong control of their kundalini energy. I will do I, that. I, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, I wanted to uh, to ask about the same thing on 
mm-hmm. on in, in relation to uh, having a crush on someone a crush a crush on someone like um like most of my life I has been married so having a crush on someone wasn't socially appropriate and not practical but <clears throat> if i would meet a a lovely woman then even she is not involved in it if i just had a crush on her like my, by myself it's my my transformation not her she would catalyze it just by speaking to me maybe and then i would have a sense of love coming in her direction and that would energize me really strongly for weeks and um basically i'm feel dependent on that cat- catalyzing effect of someone else is there a way just to remove the woman from the picture and be in that state of uh, of crush and energization without having uh, an object for that meditation <laughs> meditation so that's enough it's it's well it's everything it's it's not just enough it is what it, it, it does the job and the thing is is that you you find a way to stimulate yourself that works but you know obviously you don't want to do that in that in that way you what you're stating so another way would be to do it through meditation and be in control of it and not have to be dependent on another person to to stimulate that with you for you but we don't know that that's kundalini what you're what you're expressing we think there is a part of uh, that that is more of stimulation and stimulation in in to a positive feeling so but we would say that would be solved also by meditation thank you Uh, another question i had was uh, that a normal state for me is um, neurotic, very quick, very fast, doing things very fast, thinking very fast, eating very fast, and uh, I living very fast. And that kind of worked until recently, but I'm becoming older, and it is seems to have side effects, that super fast start, start of living. I guess it's it, it was programmed in me by living in Moscow, like which is similar to other big cities where the time is just sped up tremendously. <clears throat> So I, when I when I slow down, I feel really okay physically, but then it's the life becomes so boring and I, I can't really do things. So, so that's my my one of the biggest challenges in my life. Like either I live comfortably with my favorite vibration and speed, or I I um, and and become unhealthy, or I become healthy, but then the life becomes boring. Well, it's up to you to choose what you want. <laughs> I want I want to be healthy but live in my favorite vibration I guess. Well then we would say clean up what you can and live your life the way you want. The, a happy life is a good life. So you need to be happy with what you're doing and if you feel that you know something is boring then it's obviously not going to make you happy. We would say clean up the stuff that you can. You know, if you have a lot of energy and you use a lot of energy, maybe you could use that to exercise more to help a healthier body. Maybe you could eat a little bit slower and make sure that what you eat is nourishing for you. And then live your life very fast. If you're in a situation and you're in an environment that requires that you live fast, it's best that you live fast because you will get run over if you do not. You can't remove yourself in such a way and if you truly enjoy living fast and you're living happily that's much better for your cells of your body than living slow and bored because you can bore yourself to death truly right so clean up what you can and live as fast as you want but be honest with yourself about what you can actually control and what you can't control Thank you. There is a question from Trinity uh, in the chat box. Um, she asks about the hole that has that was found in the sun and the intense solar flare which might be coming and affecting our electrical system in the world. 
we don't see there being any uh, imminent danger to the world. And, and we don't generally speak to, about these things, but we will say to you that we do not see anything coming that you should be too worried about unless you choose to be in a timeline where that is true. Is there any positive event connected to the sun coming? That's another question. Well, the sun is, is always a positive thing because it's giving, uh, it's giving life to the world, but we don't see anything changing. The, the thing that you have to remember is that you're not really so much a product of everything that's going on around you. You're a product of what's going on inside of you. So we would like you to focus more on the inside and to feel more at peace within yourself. And we, we know that's not the answer you're seeking, but that's the kind of answers that we give. You know, um, if, for instance, and we had this discussion with Karen, if, for instance, there was a big solar flare and it ruined the world, then the world would be ruined and you would still face the same challenges that you do now. How do you become happy in with whatever situation you are if you, in fact, survive? So we would say to you, don't worry. There's no big conspiracy to keep you from knowing. If the world's going to end, it's going to end for everyone and not just for you. So that's Thank you. Okay. There's another question from the chat. Um, why do spirits use imagery such as bodies and forms, visions and experiences to communicate, speaking and acting through others, remaining nameless, faceless and formless? Is it learning or punishment? Well, we would say that it's not punishment and, 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 we, and we don't quite understand the full question. So we will say, why do they use imagery and why do they use pictures? It's because it's a, it's a way to communicate without words. You know, the, the idea of a picture is worth a thousand words. They will communicate with images because it's very easy to tell an entire story in just one flash of an image than to do it word for word. And if you're talking about the difference between a, a being that's in this dimension or in another dimension or in another plane, the communication is, is, is very, uh, it's not that they can't communicate, but the receiver sometimes has a hard time understanding what it is that they're communicating. So it's a lot easier for them to send a picture or an image of something to for that to come through for you to get the information. We don't quite understand if and if they can restate what is the punishment and we don't know. Punishment I think the punishment for, for the spirits, I guess, that was the question. That the spirit is, what is I think spirit? he was talking about the spirits that visit humans and when the spirits take human form, is it a punishment for the spirits to take that form? No, because the spirit would choose to take the form that they want to take that form. You know, if, if the spirits are truly trying to communicate, they're going to try to communicate in a form that they are familiar with or that they believe that the person they're communicating with it would be familiar with. Oh, so maybe we, that's a wider question. Maybe why do spirits incarnate? Is it a punishment to incarnate? No, it's a gift. It's truly a gift. It's truly a gift. It is a gift to incarnate, and we will tell you why. Because when you are part of one, when you are part of oneness, when you are outside of your physical body, when you are in the all that is, for lack of a better way of saying it, because that's what it is, you are aware of everything all at once, all the time. And when you are in a body, you have the gift singular focus you can pick up this cup and be concerned and focused on nothing but this cup and you can experience it in a different way than if you are non-physical you are also not only experiencing the cup in the non-physical but you're experiencing everything else that is going on and you don't have that direct that direct ability to have that very singular focus. So one of the first things that uh, we did with Karen uh, 
when we started to channel through her, where she had her eyes open and she was able to interact with objects and things as we picked up her dog because we wanted that experience, that joy of holding that perfect love being. And that is something that as much as you um, know love, as much as you can be everything all at once, you don't have that very tangible experience that you have when you have a physical body. So it's very much our joy to hold that dog. The dog didn't really notice any difference, but we were in awe of this tiny being that is a manifestation. So no, it's not a punishment, it's a choice. People, beings, spirits want to come here. They come here because they want to be here. And it's an amazing thing to be incarnated. And it's not a mistake. So it's it's a gift. It's truly a gift. Yay. Thank you. Um, any more questions in the audience? Amanda, Carolina, Kiri, Christine, Salesh, Stephanie, Wendy? I have more questions, so I can you ask do. easily. Okay. You heard? Sure, please. Have you more right. questions? Yes. All right. So one question is, I guess it's it's the strongest on my mind recently is that when I speak, people shut down, turn away, go away. It's really hard for me to hold the crowd to connect to the crowd. Even when people come to me to listen, I start delivering the message, which I think is important. And there is something in me which makes people disconnect and uh, turn away. What is that in me and how can I fix it? Because I know the message I need to deliver, but there is a problem with my way of delivering things. Or maybe I'm delivering to the wrong people or what is that? Uh, it's, it's constant, like today I will have another uh, meeting where I, I know it will happen again. I will do delivering the message and people will just run away from, from the message. Well, we would just say to you, it's, it's, you know, it's not the message that people will run away from, or maybe it is the message, but we would say to you, don't worry so much about that be confident that what you're giving is 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 what you're supposed to be giving that sounds very uh, trite so we'll try to say it in a different way be sure that the people that come to you are the people that are supposed to be coming to you and if they don't or if they turn away then either they're not ready the only thing you can do is, is be honest in your delivery of something. So we would say to you, maybe think to yourself, am I giving this in, in the most loving that I can? Am I, am I expressing something? Am I, am I having expectations about what it is that these people are hearing and don't have the expectation? Stay true to the message and give the message because you know that it's what you, you're supposed to be giving. So we would say to you, don't worry about it so much. Don't worry about it, but maybe spend some time with people interacting with them in a gentle way so that you build a rapport. But are you talking about in your channel messages or in your, just in your day-to-day -day delivered, hello, how are you messages? It, it, it really doesn't matter. There is something about me which makes people um, step away. Uh, it's um, I, I assume it's it's low Kundalini. 
I assume people feel drained as like they feel when I'm delivering the message, I'm sucking the energy out of them. That's that's my my since I'm I'm usually low on gas, uh, and people feel that I'm low on gas, like because they run so fast, I don't have enough energy in me, and that's why when I speak, I know the message is good, but because my health is sort of eh, like low energy, then then uh, they they just don't want to be connected to that body. That's my perception at the moment. Well, then we would say to you, then maybe take some time to become higher energy. Because yeah. Because that's the thing. You know, <laughs> if, if you take care of yourself, if you're happy, if you feel complete, then you're much more attractive to share and to be heard than if you're in a place where you're empty. People generally come to someone, as you were saying, to be filled up. And if you're already empty, then that'll become apparent on an energetic level. So take some time for you and take care of you. That's the most important thing. It's okay to say, no, this is not the time for me or to find a way to 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 give yourself what you're needing. Yeah, but, I guess but I, don't but sometimes you know we have the impression that you think I'm just going to push through I'm going to push through because that, that's definitely you you're seeing the results of doing that. So we would say to you don't do that. Very simply. I just that's, I guess mm. yes. Some things are very practical. Things are very practical. Some things are if it's not working in that way, if you're not getting the information the way that you should be and it's not being delivered in such a way that is giving other people the energy that they need. I don't know that anyone feels like you're sucking the energy out of them, but we would say that if there's an inner, you know, people have to be on the same energetic they have to, to, to meet energetically. And if you're not meeting with them so they, they continue on, then maybe you need to raise your energy just a little bit. So, and, yeah, and, I, and, and, and feel good in yourself or else there's no point really, you know, there's no point to, to waste your time then because it's your time. So take the time, the same time maybe, and do something good for yourself. Feel good within yourself. Because you, you, you only can give what you have. And if you don't have it, then you can't give it. So. And we would say to you too, and we want you to really understand that the love that we're talking about has to come from within you. That love has to be for yourself. You have to first love yourself. And that's a cliche, but it's the truth. You need to love you. And, and realize the, the, the value that you have and the worth that you have. And if anybody needs to be filled first, it's you. Fill yourself first. Find a way to fill yourself up because you have nothing to give if there's nothing there. The appreciation that you want to give is, is so high. We, we, we thank you for your work and the, the, what you're wanting to give, but take some time for yourself. Take some time to to feed you because then you have everything to give. And then you know, the, you know, part of it is, is understanding that this situation, you will see it possibly in another and you'll be able to help them. But first help yourself. Take the time for you. It's okay. There's a reason why sometimes people give, 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 and then they have to go away for a while because they have to refill their batteries. They have to take care of for themselves. And that's that's just the way it works. You're only so good as you as you as you are filled to the brim. I feel like that's the wrong planet. What's the wrong planet? On the right planet it would work just fine. It's just the wrong planet. Well Okay, we, we can only say to you, possibly that's true, but our advice is we're not going to change our advice. I feel like it's a rental body. It's not me. It's a rental body, and I'm just running, and it's not working too well. Well, 
until you're able to change it, we would say take care of yourself. Thank you. You don't get to get out of it. We don't, you don't get to get out of it. It's very easy to say, and, and this is also something that a lot of people do. I'm not in the right body. I'm not on the right planet. I was born at the wrong time. Sometimes we just have to be very honest and look at ourselves. And, and what we said earlier to Michelle, we also say to you, you have to look at what's working and what's not working and then make changes. And those changes don't happen to you. Those changes are made by the choices that you make. So choose for yourself what needs to be done, what, what really, really will fill you, will, will energize you, and that is following your joy. Ultimately, it's about following your joy, following your bliss, giving yourself the permission that it's okay to do that. Yes. But that's sometimes the hard choice there. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. That is a question from Omar. What can we do to lessen the hurt we feel when helping others? Is it just a side effect until the problem is fixed? What you can do is not have any expectation about the outcome. You give because you give. And if you give with expectation, then you're always going to feel disappointment. So that's the answer. That's the simplest answer. You have to give without expectation. You give because that's what you are meant to do. We don't know in what situation. What situation are, is he giving? Is he in the chat? Yes. Uh, he said, it's looking away when others are in need is not always easy, even if they have to learn lessons. Well, we would say to you that if you feel inspired to help, help. And that's just, just a simple, but compassion is, is a very valuable thing. So, I, Karen's trying to talk. We would say to you, listen, it's better that you feel discomfort when you see someone in discomfort than if you feel nothing. It's better if you cry with the person who's crying, and then feel nothing. Find the things that stimulate you to act, and then act. If you find something where you look at it and you say, I cannot live in this world anymore until this is changed, then get involved and start changing it. The best thing you can do, the best way to show love is to serve. So some things are sad. It's never easy to see a child starving or to see someone hurting. If you're in a position to offer comfort, offer comfort. Be that person. Act. There's not everything that will stimulate you, and there's definitely not everything that you can do. But choose something and know that there's another being somewhere next to you that will also be stimulated to act. But act. Don't just look at the world and say, oh, this is so sad. Choose something. Feed someone. Get involved in some way. And that is to everyone, not just to you. And thank you, Omar, for asking. We all have the ability to give so much more than we do so much more than we do. Maybe it's just boxing up food or, or giving away shoes or, or whatever it is. But do something. Stimulate your neighborhood. Get involved in some way and be part of that solution. Be love in action. Siva is what it's called. It's selfless action. It is love in action. There's nothing better than that. So if you feel pain when you look at someone hurting, the pain you're not feeling is theirs, is their pain. The pain you're feeling is your own pain is because it's your soul saying to you, do something. So do something. We think it's a really good thing that you asked the question. 
And we would encourage you to choose something, anything. When you give, you always get much more than you ever give. That's it. All right. Thank you. There is a question from uh, Christopher. Hi, did we choose this incarnation? Have we ascended before? Have we ascended before? Did we select our parents before this birth? And will this be my last incarnation on earth? Or will I come back to more, to more awareness? Thanks. Yes, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> We're joking. Yes, you chose this incarnation. All time is now. So there is the consciousness that you're experiencing now that is the un unascended being. There is the consciousness that exists in another now that is the ascended being. Um, you choose all of it. Some things happen you forget about because that's part of the game you don't want to know everything because it, it suspends it suspends the uh, enjoyment but yes you chose it and yes you've ascended before because there's many parts of you there's multiple multiple uh, parts of you that are you just like you but doing the same thing just slightly different and what was the last question about the parents, or what was the last part of the question? Uh, just he asks if he personally is going to incarnate again. Well, we would say thing is not nothing is linear, and everything is now. So, not only are you incarnated again, but you have incarnated many times, and you are multiple incarnations all now so yes and no at the same time because everything is now there's no I died and then I was born though that is true in a time space existence but in the, the larger part of it is everything is now so not only are you here now, but you're being born now and you're dying now. And then you are also incarnated somewhere else and somewhere else and somewhere else. So. We would also say to you that, you know, as much as, and this is going to be a strange concept for many of you, but as much as ascension sounds like the end of the road, as a soul, we're not really in a rush to get there. We want to be here. We want to experience. And the larger part of us, the part that is part of source, is ascended. So, it, it, and it didn't have to ascend, it is everything. So, what we would want for everyone is try to enjoy your life. Try to enjoy your being and, and don't worry so much about, am I ascending? Am I growing? You are or you're not, but we would say most of you listening are because you're, you're busy with this. Um, but try to have quality of life. Try to laugh every day. Try to make someone else laugh every day. That's quality of life. You know, um, we think it's great to sit in these 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 sessions and and share information. But truly, it would be better if you were running through a field of flowers, laughing and dancing and loving. That's quality of life, because that's when you are truly yourself. It's when you're in your full expression of you. So you may incorporate, incorporate, you may incarnate many times, or you may choose not to. Again, that'll be your choice on your soul level. We can't say what you will do. We suspect that you will because there's an enjoyment. We think that your task in this life is to figure that out. But we would also say again, 
the bigger goal is to have the love with the knowledge. If you know that you are love, and if you know that everything around you is love, and that you can experience it, that you can have an exchange with other beings that are just you, who have taken the time to have their own experiences, it's a different world you're living in. And that's only a shift of consciousness, a shift of awareness. That's what ascending is. It's the realization and it be, that not only becomes the aha moment, but the, that it becomes who you are, that you walk in that. That if anyone were to tell you, we've said this before, but we'll say it again because it was brilliant the first time we said it, but that if anyone were to tell you that you are not one, you would find it absurd. That if anyone were to tell you that, that there's any difference between you and this pair of glasses, or you and the person that you're sitting next to, or you and the floor, or you and the dog, if they were to tell you there's anything outside of that, or that you're not part of that, then you wouldn't believe them. Now we're trying to convince you that that is true. So the goal of ascension is to come to the place where you know who you are. And who you are is love. That is who you are. That is it. And there is no difference between you and anything or any molecule that is around you. You are part of that. It is only part of that, part of that oneness. That is what it is. So when you realize that, then the playing begins. So if you're struggling with, what do I do with my life? Where do I go? Why am I not happy? It's because you don't know who you are. We would make that your big focus. Who am I? I am, I am love. I am part of everything. And then you can play and really enjoy your life. You don't worry about incarnating. Think about it. If you know who you are, then you come in an incarnation. You're like, I'm here. I'm going to go and experience this, and I'm going to taste that, and I'm going to go there, and I'm going to have all these wonderful experiences. Even the experiences that are not, say, wonderful, they're experiences. And you can relish those. You can appreciate them for what they bring to you, what the, the knowledge they bring to you about yourself, your choices, the world that you live in. So... That's the difference between ascension and non-ascension. That one key thing, when you know it, everything changes. You have ascended. And we come into this world without that clear knowledge, maybe that suspicion that that's what it is. And we've set up a situation where we try to get there but we also want to see how life would be if you don't know so we will tell you you and everyone and everything is just the reflection of the divine and the more you know it the more you see that in everyone else and everything else the more fun and the more willing you will be to be here because you will know that this is part of you. So know who you are. That is the goal of man. Know thyself. If you know yourself, you know everything. Thank you. Um, thank you. Another question I have is, I have in my mind specifically two of my friends, but I'm sure there is like several more of my friends who are in exactly the same situation. Um, the money. They already made a choice. They know they are talented healers and talented teachers, and they have a good message to deliver. They want to deliver the message. And each of them is in a crisis, in the money crisis, financial crisis. There is no money coming. There is no flow, and they don't even see that coming. It's kind of very far, not reachable. At the same time, they see there is 
a huge flow of finances and money and energy and prosperity and resources passing by, but they cannot plug into that. And on the other hand, there is even more desperate people who have no money no, and terrible um, financial situation that are sick, dying, and, and don't know what to do. So they're in the middle stuck, and they cannot connect to this source of, of the resources. What would be your advice? Well, we would say to you that abundance comes in many ways, and it doesn't always come in the form of money, but it also comes in the form of being taken care of and being cared for. And abundance can be also abundance of joy, abundance of health, abundance of uh, yeah, many things. So there's no simple answer because there's many variables that have to do with whether or not you're successful. We would say to them that there's nothing wrong with having a small job next to the job that they want and they need to build their business as a business and they need to put the energy into it to build it. So a lot of things have to do with planning and have to do with oversight. So we would say, what are we, without knowing the circumstance, what is it that they're actually doing? Are they, are they putting out information to let people know what they're doing? Are they also working a job on the side? You know, sometimes things energetically have a lot to do with your belief about what you can do in a situation. So without actually knowing that, we would just say that they maybe need to do something alongside of what they're doing in order to take the time to build up their business. But very much it has to do with what is their belief about what they're able to do. If they say, we know that there's a stream of money, we just can't plug into it, then they're already saying we can't do it. And that's definitely uh, negative to start with. They've already created a distance between themselves and, and the success of it. So without, again, speaking to them directly, we would say the mentality of what they believe is possible needs to be very clear, and they need to be very clear about it. And there's nothing wrong with doing something else as well as what they're doing. Because if they believe that if they get a job, do you see the difference? If I believe that I get a job and that'll bring me money so that it'll free me up to do something else, then that might be the permission that they need to do that. Very much of it has to do with your mentality about it and your belief about the possibility of it. And again, the words that you use were very, very much determining that there's a difference between them and the ability to make it happen. So if they need to do something else on the side because that gives them the feeling that this will now be possible, then that's what they should do. You know, All right, I will, I will give a little more advice, uh, detail. So one of them is, uh, is, is uh, Lucia and she is a professional um, energy worker, so she already has a business which just is in a crisis at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly she's not looking for another job, but um, <clears throat> she's just kind of working through that crisis to re recover the, the financial flow which was there before. And um, the second person is Karen Newman, and uh, I would say it's, it's the same situation except um, I guess it's it's the business is it needs to be built built from scratch. So, do you have any advice on that? Well, we will say to you, Karen's not in a crisis, so uh -huh. um, that's a, that's a difference right there. And she is mm -hmm. in the the process of building her her business, but that's mm -hmm. definitely um, something that's happening for your friend. Um, mm -hmm. If if she's in a situation or a location where there needs to be a change, and this is what we said earlier. Maybe the location where she is is not the correct location. And all the variables really need to be looked at. But something mm -hmm. has to be changed. Something has to be uh, moved or let go of or, or initiated to make that happen. So there is a variable there. And, and 
the thing is, is if you're in a situation where the location where you are does not have the people coming to it that it used to, then it's, it's a good idea to look at changing the situation. So those things, again, have everything to do with is she willing to take the actions that's necessary to make the change? Does she need to move? Does she need to start to look in different places? Is she sitting waiting for those same people to come back? Because sometimes they don't come back. You know, you know in, in, in an instance of Karen, we'll, we'll just give a good example because the Karen is, is part of us. So she's in a situation where the job that she's had, which has been uh, in the advertising world, in the magazine world, has shifted so much that people are not doing print advertising anymore. Mm -hmm. So that is what is. And so she can say, well, I'm going to continue to try to hold on to this thing that is basically disappearing, or I can make changes, or she can make changes, I'm speaking now, Karen, that, that will make sure that they go with the flow of where the energy is going. And the energy is not in now print advertising. So you can hold on to something for too long and hope that it'll change or you can go to where it is working and it's not working in print. So sometimes you have to move on to something else. So many things would have to do with what is she offering? Is what she's offering what people want? You know, that would be something that a, a business an, uh, an analyst could have sit down. But if you're doing something repeatedly over and over again and it's simply not working, then there's no reason to keep doing exactly the same thing. There's something that has to shift. And Thank that you. a lot of times is a shift of choice and direction. So, but thank you for caring for Karen. She appreciates. Thank you. There is another question from Kerry. Um, the epidemic of narcissism, is it going to die off? And I think I know the answer, but um, maybe you have a different perspective. Well, We would just say, at this moment, it. We would say that's a big judgment uh, um, that uh, it's coming um, from Carrie, but um, things shift and things change, and when it becomes unfashionable to be narcissistic, it will, it will change. Um, we're living in a world right now that is very social medially um, driven. Everyone wants to present a certain aspect of themselves to the world that really sometimes has very little to do with reality. Um, but there are other people that are just loving. So we don't know if you're only looking outward towards the media or towards the outside world, but we would say surround yourself with people that are not living in that kind of world and you won't see it so much. I say it's a big step up for many people to become a narcissist. It's an upgrade of their spirit. Mm, we don't agree. I narcissism say, narcissism is, is a form of being selfish. And there's no selfishness in love. So. Okay. And I, I, I say it's just a wave of draconian energy, which I felt came it's about. It's quite possible. Mm. Well, we would just say that a month, I think narcissism has been around a long, long, long time. Um, and it could be, it has that sort of draconian energy but it's it's definitely not unique to that it has everything to do with selfishness and has everything to do with um, being selfish mostly so selfishness is not love and the more people come into love the less that will that will be there will be 
and you see it, people are going in two different ways. There's people that are moving more towards love and there's people that are moving more towards selfishness, greed, all those things that you see that are negative. And, and many channelers talk about that the, that the world is sort of splitting and, and, and that's what's happening. So we would say surround yourself with people that are in that and then you will not really see it so much. Be aware that it's there, but you wouldn't say that it should really be affecting you so much. And if you are quite narcissistic, then work on building your love self and, and, and standing more in your love. Um, I will give you an example. I Most of things I do is webinars. And in webinars, having a narcissist is a, a pleasure because they are not shy of camera and they can express themselves very clearly they really can hold the ground be a good host and most people cannot do that they are so uh damaged by the western or asian modern education they can't really face the camera i think in that case narcissism is a big plus yes possibly we, we, we would say to you maybe your definition of narcissism is very uh narcissism in and of itself on a slight way it is an aspect of a personality, but we wouldn't say that a true narcissist is not a person who is uh, very uh, pleasurable to be around, you know. To me, it's just self-love. If people love themselves really well, then they're not shy and they're not offended by anyone. It's a pleasure to work with them. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll accept your definition then, Max. Thank you. The last question and request was, um, from Kerry again, uh, can you give us a healing on um, the block of of the blockages of the third eye and uh, on the heart chakra? We can do that, and we can do that as the close, and that's probably a nice way yes. to close. So, thank you. Okay, <laughs> we will sit up to just our posture is going more over and over as the as the webinar is going on. So. All right, well, we would put our feet flat on the ground, take a space, and if you can take off your shoes, it's best to have your feet on the ground. It would be great if you could put your feet in the dirt, but we will accept the ground now. Just take a space. Put your hands on your lap. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Just let it gently out through your mouth as you feel fit to do. Do that one more time. So, I want you to picture a beautiful white light above you, shining down, coming in for your crown chakra. As it comes in, it balances you. You feel balanced. Anything that is out of balance is going to now come into balance. So your energy will be calmer. Your mood will be more balanced. Your emotions will be balanced. Because what's coming in is this white light is just the kundalini of the universe. It's coming to balance you. So that white light will come down through your crown chakra and move its way down your head, down into your neck, and then through your chest moving down through your stomach, down into your legs, down to your feet. And then it will be going through your body, but down into the ground, back into Mother Earth. And within that light that's come through, you have a circuit of energy. 
So just allow yourself to feel that balanced energy coming through you. And now we want you to focus on your third eye. And that same white light that has come down now starts to press against the inside of your third eye. And as that white light energy hits it, it begins to clean it, removing all debris and fog away so that you can begin to see more clearly. And as that white light cleans the film away from your third eye, see your eye opening bigger than it ever has before. Picture your eye being quite big, taking up the entire front part of your forehead. And see that white light now coming and streaming out of that eye, and giving you the ability to see. Seeing into the astral. Seeing into the world. Because through that eye, your perception is clearer than through your own naked eyes. Because you're able to see people and beings for who they really are. You're able to also see them with their third eye and that white light energy coming through. You're able to see them connected to all that is. And now let that white light energy push towards your heart and to clean around your heart area, removing all jealousies and frustrations and angers that you would have towards yourself or to somebody else. See that area becoming much bigger, much brighter. And as you look with your clean third eye into the world, see your heart energy also going out to those people and that their love energy is coming to you. And meet that energy in the middle so that there's streams coming from them and streams coming from you and that you're connected to them in that way. And every person that you see, send them direct from your heart, that love energy. And then understand that as you love, there's a feedback loop that is created. It goes from your heart to their heart, from their heart to your heart, and up to your third eye. The more you love, the more clearly you see. Now picture any block that you may have within your body. See it as a dark energy and send that white light to it. And like a laser beam, break it up. So whether your block is within your mind, with your mentality, what you think, whether it's something that you haven't spoken or angry words that you are speaking, that is also a block because you're blocking that energy of love with your words. So send that white light into your throat chakra and break up any of that darkness. And see that moving down and out of you and into the ground and into Mother Earth. But every being you see between now and forever, send them that love energy from your heart and then look at them through your third eye. See them as you, part of the total you, the big you, the one you. And you can do this exercise however you want. But just remember that light, love energy is the kundalini energy of the universe. And it's coming through you. And you can direct it. Send it to wherever it needs to be in your body or to whomever needs it. So.
we don't want to close off this circuit because this is really your energy to keep with you always. What we do ask us to just bring your consciousness back now and realize that that energy is coming in through you. Strong, beautiful love energy. And every time you love someone else, you see more clearly. You see from the highest aspect. Bring your consciousness back. And raise your hands together in front of you. And we will just say to you, Namaste. Namaste. We want you to all know that we love you and The best thing you can do for anyone is to share your most perfect self with them. And your most perfect self is you standing in your own truth of who you are. I encourage you to serve people, be of service. Be love in action. And to know who you are and enjoy your life. Enjoy your time. Play. Smile. Because that is when you are your truest self. And you're not here for any other reason than that and to be your truest self, and to experience the world in that way. So, the sooner you remember that, the sooner you will ascend and be done with it, or the people who are trying to get out of here. So work on that. Work on being joyful. And then you might be having so much fun, you forget that you want to leave in the first place. That's all we have for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Super. It was real. I felt that energy coming. It was nice. Okay. I had more questions, but maybe some other day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Write them down. Write them down. So, so announcements. Oh, um, I gotta see. Just I can't see. For those who watches that, mm -hmm. um, I do my webinar as usual Tuesday morning. And to find it, go on humancolony.org, click on jump. It's uh, the, the links are there. It's free. Mm -hmm. It's channeling Yogananda. Uh, Thursday evening, I speak for myself. And it's a good opportunity to speak to Max for a change. And uh, Friday morning, we do uh, it's, it's a paid webinar, become a member of Hukula Club. Uh, go to humancolony.org and click on club. Ten dollars a month, and then it is a remote viewing uh, class with uh, Karen. And uh, next Saturday, uh, Karen, you are hosting, right? Uh, yes. Yep. And we will <laughs> announce. So. The, I guess so. Uh, the Karen would be a, a, a channel, or there will be a guest channel. We'll decide that. Yeah. Uh, and the workshop is um, uh, August 3rd, and you know how to find us on humancolony.org, click on workshop. And right now I will post also the, um, the menu there will be called newsletter, and subscribe to our email list and 
to receive uh, invitations to our webinars and links of our email. So subscribe to newsletter by going to humancolon.org. Yeah. That's all. All right. Well, just uh, one more thing. Uh, on the 12th of August uh, in Amsterdam, so if you're in, uh, uh, you know, anywhere close to Amsterdam, we have a channeling event with myself, Sean Swanson, Vitika Kulhoff. It's called Intergalactic Conversations. And uh, you can find tickets on aboutoneness.com. And we would love to see you. It's going to be a really, really exciting event. Uh, Sean and Vitika both uh, channel the Yael. And I'll be channeling Theos. And we'll just have a very nice open forum day of uh, question and answer. So. Hope to see you there. That's about oneness.com. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everybody who was still with us. And thank you, those eight viewers who are there. And thank you all who will watch in the recording. Goodbye. Bye bye.